Hey, we're back. Uh, this is one of my favorite parts of the process of creating terrain is when you put this amalgamation of all the grit and sand and styrofoam and uh, goop and weird things on there. And as soon as you hit it with this first coat of primer, it all comes together as a single piece and it starts looking like something real. Um, what else did we do over here? That little skull thing I did with those uh, resin skulls you saw in one of the parts and just had that uh, put in there. So it has a cool little look to it. And then uh, we got the, um, over here. We got that display piece for the uh, battle wagon right there. And you can look in here, I don't know if you can see the, how, um, let's see in this light. It looks like a, you know, it looks like a dirty road that's gonna be dry brushed and airbrushed and, um, weathering pigments will be put in there. It looks like a you know beat up road. You got that little hump there where you can see the tire tracks went through. And then you got the place where the comms tower is gonna be. It can be there or not. It's got nice texture to it. it uh, there's a magnet underneath it. So it looks like it could be a regular heel. It kind of goes with the bark that's been um, filled in. So um, that's it for right now. I'm gonna finish um, base coating these. And I'm using this interior flat latex from Walmart. I'm thinning it out with my uh, Airbrush mixture of the 85% distilled water, 15% alcohol. A lot of people say you can't use alcohol, it dries it out, but just a little bit of alcohol helps break the surface tension, lays it down and dries a little bit faster. And with latex paint, you do have to let it cure a little bit before you start doing other things to it. But uh, that's not a problem. This is gonna add a nice layer of protection to uh, the, the uh, sand and the um, goop on it and the protect it overall. I might do a second coat later on. But um, so far it's looking pretty good. And let's see what's that other piece over there. Let's see the hill. And that turned out that just the, you're not sure when you're doing your uh, carving, I was gonna turn out, you gotta get more confident over time. You just gotta kinda go with it. You know, look at something and kinda let it flow through you, through your whatever tool you're using, a hot, hot knife or um, foam cutter or a bread knife or even a razor, you know, a hobby knife. And this, uh, Whatever you feel it uh, should look like, it should look like it. And I think it's coming out pretty good. Even those little brush strokes I was worried about actually added to it and gave a little more texture. So, um, and I'm still working on a way to mask it to do the different layers of sediment. And I think I have the uh, answer over there. You'll see a stack of foam. I'm gonna see if I can stack it against the items and then have a different, I have one inch and a half inch so you can just add different layers and put them in different areas. And it doesn't have to be perfect because the sediments aren't just like, like someone masked it off with tape. And um, when you do the next layer above it, any kind of overspray will be covered anyways. So then the top part will be the only one with a little bit of overspray and that's where the light's gonna hit it more so you can dry brush it up there anyways or highlight it with the airbrush. So um, we'll, when uh, we get to that point, I'll bring that out and see how it works. It's a theory and I uh, hope it works. So thank you for joining us and we'll see you in the next one. Okay, we're back. <clears throat> got all the latex down. I got some, uh, I picked this up at a, a discount store. Sandable gray primer. I want to do the building in that. I don't trust the, um, <clears throat> the uh, latex to be a primer for the plastic. It probably will work, but just to play it safe. And I'm going to go, uh, after we do this, we'll dust it back over the latex on the, uh, and also hopefully the latex is laying enough of a foundation on top of the foam that it's not going to melt on me, so. We'll see. Nice. This one enough to cover it. Don't have to saturate it with the paint. And I got the uh, fifteen dollars spray gun. Actually, uh, you guys that run these at um, run airbrushes, this is an awesome thing for doing terrain. You can run this off of an airbrush compressor probably. It runs between fifty and seventy pounds. I'm running it at sixty right now. You can probably turn it down to fifty. But that probably still. We'll probably even more to play that. Well, we're back. It's real quick. I just wanted to show you this. Uh, I'm going to take it out to cure. And I um, wanted to uh, speak it over the compressor in the last section. Um, 
a $15 spray gun from Harbor Freight. I don't know if you can get these in the UK or not, but if you can, these are usually 30 bucks. I got on sale for 15 I bought two of them. Um, if it breaks, throw it away. Um, uh, um, but uh, it's instead of using an airbrush, which has small amount of paint, even with the bottles on it, this is easy to change, easy to clean, especially running latex paint on terrain, uh, which I recommend as your first coat instead of just doing craft paint or something like that. It adds a lot of protection to it. And I can see a spot that I need to fix on that far column. You can see, yeah, I put it under light, and you can see when the paint starts to shrink and uh, contract, there's like little bubbles and stuff coming out. Or not bubbles, but little holes in the styrofoam from the detail that you can still see some white in. Um, that gun is great. I will, can run off a regular compressor or a regular uh, airbrush compressor. It runs between 50 and 70 pounds. I'm running it at 60, and it's 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 a it's a time saver. And throw some paint in there. I thin it down with the same stuff I use on my um, airbrush paint, and it works great. I have had no problems with it. Um, using cheap Walmart interior flat. I don't know how much I pay for a gallon of it, but it's lasted me days. And uh, there is the Krylon Pro. I bought that at a discount hardware store in Roseville. I've got the name of it, but it was like two bucks for the can. It looks great on the uh, terrain piece bag there. So I need to zoom in on that. And actually, a little dusting of gray on that rock looked kind of cool. Too bad I'm, I'm doing this in a desert theme. I have to figure out how to do with the doing the reds and browns and beiges. So um, that's gonna be it for this part. I might come back real quick to see what it looks like on the terrain. Then we'll, we're going to start throwing down base coats on the uh, terrain board itself. Then we'll start doing the details on the terrain and the hills. And we'll see you then. Thanks. Well, this will be the last part of this section. Uh, we'll start painting after this and we'll let this uh, base coat cure and dry. Then we'll start doing the um, adding some color and making it look like a desert board. Actually, it turned out pretty nice. There's going to be more terrain, obviously. This is an eight foot board, easily changed. Uh, these are four foot by two foot sections. These are going to be a range is somewhat modular. I think in the future, all my boards will be two by two and less uh, terrain that's built in like these hills, but that's okay. Um, I kind of built it to make it fair. You got two hills on each side and there's a couple little areas of um, uh, cover like there and that big, that's a bigger hill. It shouldn't be there, but you see the other modular hills look really good. And uh, that little desert outpost, where's that one piece at? Let's see here. The communications. I did some vertebrae work on the um, comm tower. So that's basically almost done, probably in another wash. And that just magnetizes right on there. Let's see how that looks. So that looks pretty cool. Big board, easily uh, shrunk down to six by four if we need to, or four by four. So uh, that'll be it for right now. When we come back, we're going to start laying uh, base coats on this, and then we'll uh, start doing the doing that sedimentary uh, layering, and it'll be all airbrush work after this. Maybe a little bit of dry brush towards the very end, just to hit the uh, details on uh, the tops of this stuff to simulate sunlight hitting the, the desert planet. So uh, once again, thank you for joining me, and please comment. I uh, enjoy the uh, back and forth, and also any suggestions is great too. Thanks again.